Daki. The Upper Moon 6 seems like an obvious addition to Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. Many of you, just like me, would love to see this character in game, but it's not looking great for this demon. If we look at the character select screen, there's only space for one more character, and Data Mining has found files for Tengen, but no files for anyone else. Besides, CyberConnect 2 loves to make multiple games in the same series, so it's very possible that they're saving some characters for a sequel. And that's why Daki, Gyutaro, Kano, and many other characters on your wish list might not happen. But whether Daki becomes playable in this game, or the next, I have just rewatched the entirety of season 2 while taking some notes on what her moves would be and what she would play like. And now, I want to share it all with you guys. If you'd like to see more of these, make sure to subscribe. We've looked at how a few characters would fight in game in the past and I have a few ideas for the future as well. So while you're down there, let me know who you'd like to see next and hit that like button because it sure does help me out a lot. And with that, let's jump into it. Daki would be an absolute nightmare of a character to fight against, because she spends most of her time fighting with her sashes. She's gonna be a character with insane attack range. You think Enmu is bad? I fear her range might be even bigger. Her sash manipulation is absolutely the thing that defines her fighting style. The sashes are soft like silk, but sharp like a blade. But she doesn't just use the sashes for regular attacks, she can also use them for protection or for trapping opponents. Sometimes she uses them to store food for later. And I think in-game that would translate into a character with very good range on her attack, along with some tricky uses of her sash for her abilities. So, let's dive in and look at how it would specifically work. In Demon Slayer, every character has a 3 attack combo when you mash the attack button. After the 3 attacks, they have a finisher. A neutral finisher if you keep mashing, a launcher if you tilt the stick up, or a knockdown if you tilt the stick down. The first 3 attacks, as I mentioned, would use the sash, giving her some very long range on her attack buttons. And by itself, that already makes for a pretty strong character, with a game plan similar to Rui's, consisting of keeping a safe distance and attempting to reset the opponent over and over. Over. Finishing the combo in the neutral position would unleash a flurry of attacks. Still using the sash, the attack would look like this. And timing wise, I can see it being similar to Rui's finisher once again. If you tilt the stick up, I can see the combo ending with this attack, the one that decapitates Tanjiro in the show. Don't worry, Tanjiro is fine, it was just a mirage. But it's a memorable moment and could be an easy quick reference to fit into her moveset. As for the knockdown combo, there's this moment when Daki is fighting against Tanjiro mid-air and she finishes a combo by punching him downwards. So I think for her down combo, she could jump up and with this downward sponge she would knock down the opponent, making this one of the few moves that she does from close range. For her jumping attacks, we go back to that same moment, it would start with some pretty standard jumping attacks with a sash and then follow up with something like this, but maybe in a smaller scale, a rain of sashes dropping down from above. And for her jumping diving attack, I really like this moment where Daki attacks with a sash and then uses it to pull herself towards the opponent and deliver a close range attack. And once again, it would maybe work similar to Rui's dive attack where he first throws the webs and then pulls himself towards the opponent. Maybe I should stop comparing her to Rui, but I can't help it. Th that's what her attacks remind me of. For a strong attack, Daki would bring her sashes together and attempt this piercing attack. This strong attack would probably also have pretty good range. And then for her grab, please, no more. No more Enmu range on her grab, though she'd probably have something similar. I think the grab animation would start with the sashes trapping the opponent and then transition into a series of slashes and a throw, referencing this moment in her fight against Nezuko. As far as animations go, you guys know that every character has a little power-up animation when they go into Surge. And I'm picking this moment from when Daki transforms. She changes the color of her hair to white and to be honest, I think the entire character will have white hair from the very start. It's not gonna transform when she goes into Surge, that's not how Demon Slayer characters work in this game. But it's more about the power-up animation that comes before this transformation, that super close zoom-in that says it's time to get serious. And if Daki is in Boost or in Surge, she gets an extra cinematic finisher on her combo just like every other character. And I think for her finisher, Finisher, she would first jump back and throw all of her sashes at her opponent, finishing the combo like this. That's all of her normal attacks, let's move on to her skills. Now, demons have more skills than usual, they have a total of 5, but keep in mind that demon skills have to be more valuable, because if you want to use a demon skill, you're giving up the chance to escape out of a combo, for instance. Starting with her normal skills, though, first up we have the sash trap. This is where the tricky part of her sash manipulation comes into play. This would be a trap that Daki spawns on the opponent's feet, and if it connects, it would trap them in the sash, giving Daki a free combo. Almost like, don't make me say it, almost like Rui's demon skill. 
It shows up at your feet and activates after a short delay. But unlike Rui's ability, it wouldn't cover such a big area and it wouldn't deal any damage. In fact, as far as size goes, I can see it being a lot closer to Urokodaki's traps. Since it's not as big and it doesn't deal any damage, I think it would be fair if this ability actually gave her a yellow combo instead of a red one. Next, we're gonna give Daki some mobility with a sliding dash special move. It's pretty straightforward, she dashes towards her opponent and attacks. No armor, no nothing, just straight up a tool to get closer. These two abilities would also be her assists, so you have some utility with a trap and you have a combo extension with a slide. Her guard skill would be a reversal like many others in the game. Daki would create a shield with her sashes which would be unsafe if blocked but if it connects it can lead to a small combo, maybe a red one. And then we have her demon skills. First up, blood demon art 8 layered ob slash. The only blood demon art she does in the entire show or at least the only named blood demon art. Daki extends her sashes covering a wide area and then they come down slashing everything in its path. This would be a wide reaching ability in the game and potentially our highest damaging ability outside of her ultimate. And then we're gonna get tricky with the tilt demon skill. Now, as you might know, Daki's sashes can be sentient. She can disconnect sashes from her body and the sashes can act on their own. So for this demon skill, we're gonna give her a projectile, the only projectile in her entire kit. She would throw a slow sash that would move in your direction with a little bit of tracking. Nothing ridiculous like Enmu's projectiles, more like, you, you guessed it, more like Rui. If the sash gets blocked, nothing happens, but if it hits you, it will actually absorb the enemy player and the sash will then return to Daki. Just like she traps her other victims for feeding, she would gain power from this while damaging the opponent. And what she gets from the opponent could really be anything. She could steal their meter or their special meter or the demon skill meter, even health. The point is, if this connects, the opponent gets absorbed by Daki and then she just spits them out after draining their resources. And this is an ability that will certainly make this a very unique character. Finally, let's talk about her ultimate. Her most devastating attack is one that doesn't even have a name as far as I know. When she first transforms into her white-haired form, she absolutely destroys the city with a series of slashes so powerful they leave behind this pink fire. She does this move twice in the show and I cannot think of a better, more flashy ultimate than this to be her cinematic attack. So to summarize, Daki would be a character with a lot of range on all of her attacks due to her utilizing her sashes as her primary weapon. For her skills, we have a long-range trap, a forward advancing slide and a reversal which shields her from damage. For her demon skills, we've got the 8-layered Obi Slash and the Sentient Sash that absorbs an opponent. And for her ultimate, a nice flashy series of rapid attacks leaving behind this beautiful pink fire. I know I talked a lot about her moves compared to Rui's because I really saw a lot of similarities, mostly because of her range. But if you think about the trap and the power to absorb with the sash, then Daki starts to gain her own identity as a character gameplay-wise. And who knows, maybe her game plan wouldn't even revolve around resets at all. With her absorption power, she might be more of a character that just denies resources from the opponent. A playstyle that's so far, we don't have in the game yet. And that's how Daki could play in Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles or a potential sequel. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I know exactly who you'd like me to look at next. It's very obvious, isn't it? So make sure to subscribe if this video does well, he's definitely coming up. And as always, thank you very much for watching, my name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Boy.